Christy. Hope you're doing great on this Wednesday day, evening, night, tomorrow, next week, whatever time of day it is for you. We're going to talk about kitchen design rules that you can break if you wanted to, that aren't going to make or break the kitchen, aren't going to change a whole lot of things. When we design a kitchen, and what I hear from a lot of people when I'm designing kitchens for clients is that they want to get everything, all the ducks lined up in a row. They want their kitchen to be functional and workable. And some people are really concerned about the guidelines and the rules and are, is everything within, you know, the certain amount of inches or, you know, is everything reasonable in the kitchen? Of course, you want everything to be reasonable and functional. My last video, and this is interesting because it's on the coattails of Saturday's video, where I talk about the 31 kitchen design guidelines. And those are basically just the NKBA guidelines, which you can look up on the Internet and see kind of a little more detail of all of those. We want to make sure that we structure our kitchens within those guidelines, but there's a lot of guidelines that we can actually break, and we're going to talk about some tonight. Is it okay to break some of these guidelines? So we're going to we're going to do that in a second. Listen, if you are watching the replay and you're like, man, this guy goes on for a long time before he gets into the thing, just um, at three minutes, just skip ahead to three minutes. I'm going to ramble till about three minute mark, and then we're going to get into this because I want to say hi to everyone who's uh, coming on, saying hi in the chat. I see you in there. Um, I see there's a little bit of pun happening already with my uh, thumbnail. Of course, this is a triangle, and we'll talk about that when we talk about the kitchen design rules that we're going to break. And uh, so people are joining, and I just want to say thank you for being here on this day and the time that you're joining. It uh, is really fun. So if this is your first time, make sure you uh, you say hi. I see uh, David Kell from Scotland. I don't know if it's your first time, David, but uh, awesome that you are joining us. I see Helen's here. Of course, who was first? Oh, Phil was first. With obviously, obviously, that's not a triangle. Well, Phil, that's uh, that, that's you know, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what is a triangle. You know, I don't know. And uh, Kira's here. Who else? When? Hi, Wendy and Terry, Joe, Jackie. Hey, thanks so much for being here, everyone. Winston's here. Lynn and uh, da 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 da. What else? Oh, Natalie jumped in. Lynn. Okay. So y'all are joining. If I miss your name or if I don't say hi to you, it's my bad. I got 30 seconds. I'm going to start the content. So if you're watching the replay still, just like I said, three minute mark, we're going to jump into this. We're going to hit it. We're going to hit it hard about the design rules that I think are okay to break. And then after that, um, after each one, we can, uh, we'll do a little quiz. Actually, we're going to do a little quiz about countertops. So here you go. Let's just bring this up now. We'll jump ahead here. If you if you skipped ahead to the three minute mark, uh, this is a triangle. So one of the one of the first kitchen rules that I think is interesting to talk about and break is maybe the kitchen triangle. And so this thumbnail and this idea of this circle, oval, whatever you want to call it, obviously it's not a triangle, but you could you could probably make it into a triangle if you could just you know put a couple points there. Here's the thing: the kitchen triangle is one of those things I get asked about a lot on whether or not it's okay to break, what what should it be, what if my kitchen doesn't have a, a triangle, what, I mean, what are the rules around that? And we've chatted about it before in the live stream, and I'll bring it up again today. Whether your kitchen has the perfect kitchen triangle, um, which I, I sort of described in my last week's video, uh, because basically by accident, my kitchen in this home it has a pretty good kitchen triangle. I didn't plan it that way. It just is what it is. Or whether your kitchen has some kind of other shape. I like to think of the work in the kitchen being more this oval shape. In other words, you know, there's, we, we work in our kitchens like, you know, we're all over the place. There's no, I don't think there's a perfect way to design it. Yes, there are more functional ways than others. And that's the whole essence of what they're trying to do with the kitchen triangle is make the work in the kitchen more functional and it dates back to just the kitchen being like um a factory actually where uh things are, are done in a particular order so they're super efficient and um and, and that's all fine but we want to make sure that if we're thinking about it, doing a kitchen and we're doing a kitchen design or we're working with somebody that the elements of a kitchen triangle aren't absolutely necessary to adhere to now I'm breaking my own rules because, you know, I, I would want your kitchen to have a good kitchen triangle of sorts, but we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on here. So 
I think your the shape of functionality in your kitchen probably looks more like this or some other random shape because that's how you use your kitchen and that's the way it's most functional for you. All right, cool. So here we go. Yes, hit that thumbs up. I do love it. Um, slide number two. All right, here we go. So this, again, just a little depiction of <clears throat> kitchen drive. Okay. Yeah, I mean, here we go. Um, we got the three main elements of your kitchen. That's where the kitchen triangle comes from, of course. Your sink, your range, your stove, whatever, and your fridge. But we all know that there's more elements in, the, in today's kitchen than these types of things. Though they are still there, they're still staples. There's many other things in the kitchen that you know you, we access daily. And some some days the, the triangle is used efficiently. Some days we're just back and forth to the fridge because it's at the fridge and the microwave. It's left overnight. And so there's, there's different work triangles that, that are in the kitchen, different work patterns, I guess, is the best way to put it. So um, we, we want to be able to understand that it's okay to break that rule and not worry about adhering to all the, the different dimensions that it needs to be. I think it's okay that we can, we can break that. We'll look at a few kitchens. Here's the thing with the kitchen triangle. Oftentimes, it just happens. So in today's modern kitchens, a lot of kitchens, unless they're just one wall kitchens, are going to have, if they have two walls, by just default almost, almost all kitchens have some sort of pattern, like a triangle or whatever you want to call it. Um, we don't necessarily have to get hung up on the shape, but there there is a pattern in the kitchen. And, and it's just because of the shape of kitchens dictate that that's what's going to be there. Like we mentioned last week about the mixed metal thing. Mixed metals happen in a kitchen because they just sort of happened because not all companies can match all their metals for every surface in your kitchen to match. So you get mixed metals. So interior designers come up with this idea that, well, it's okay to have that. Well, it has to be okay because that, there's almost no other way around that. With a kitchen triangle, there's almost no way around it if you're just going to create a functional kitchen without even thinking about the kitchen triangle, you're probably going to create one because you're trying to create a functional kitchen. And so it, it happens almost by default. So you can see here, we have a kitchen triangle and this particular one, beautiful kitchen, nice color, you know, nice and nice countertops and all that stuff. But if you look at this kitchen and if you went and looked at the NKBA guidelines for what these should be, this one doesn't you know, this would be underneath that. This would be under the requirements um, of, of a, you know, a, a guidelined kitchen triangle. So, hey, but is, does this kitchen function? P probably. It looks like it does. Uh, let's look at this one. This is a massive kitchen. So here we have just this huge space. Looks gorgeous. Looks beautiful. And this is way outside the, the, the maximum of what a kitchen triangle would be in, in the guideline. But does this kitchen work? What, where, what else would you do here? Would you just put the fridge in some random spot? It fits where it fits. It's beautiful looking. It's, you know, it's big and elegant and it is what it is. So in this particular case, uh, you know, yes, there's still a triangle. It's interrupted by the island, which is a big no-no. You don't want to be interrupting it with the island. But this is this is how the kitchen functions and works. And so you could make a kitchen triangle by putting the fridge in some other place, but it's not going to work that way. It's going to work better this way. And it looks nicer this way. So that works fine. Here's a little kitchen here. Probably an average-ish size kitchen, maybe. This is an ultra massive, but it's not too too small either. And we see we have the fridge, which is paneled, the sinks in the island, and then this makes a really nice little triangle. But all these kitchens are functional and usable and workable and, and have aspects of them that, you know, for the homeowner would be perfect, the perfect kitchen for them. Here's one here that is a, a single walled kitchen. So when we come to just a single wall kitchen or where all the appliances are on one uh, wall, well, there's no triangle at all. It's just a straight line. It's linear. Um, at best, it's a scalene triangle. I don't know. That's it. That is a type of triangle where all sides aren't equal. Um, so here you go. You just have this straight line as a functional. Sure. Um, this would be more like a a, a line with an arch because you want to get around somebody. So like, you know, the shape is the shape. The pattern is the pattern. But if you're thinking of designing a kitchen and you're hung up on making sure that it follows the, the triangle rule, don't even, don't worry about it. 
there's other factors to consider when creating your, designing your kitchen that you should be thinking about. This one here is a really small kitchen. So it has a kitchen triangle. It's very tight, very compact. It's there. Does it matter? Probably not. It's functional. It works in that space. What else are you going to do? Just put the fridge in the, in the, in the garage like you could. Garage, garage. I don't know how you say that. How do you people say that? So these are just all examples of different, you know, sizes of kitchen triangles or non-triangles or other types of shapes that work in a kitchen because you have to deal with one, the size of the space that you're dealing with. So in this instance, it's a very small kitchen. We go back a couple here. It's a very big kitchen. You're also dealing with, you know, the amount of appliances that you have and, you know, considering other work sections like the cleanup with trash and sink and dishwasher and fridge and microwave and small appliances and prep and clean up and sink and, you know, all the different ways that you move around your kitchen, the triangle is kind of an outdated thing to talk about and really should be updated to be more of a, of a, a flow in the kitchen that works in a particular way for you, the homeowner. Now, you know... And in, 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 for, for an instance, for instance, in this particular kitchen, the so it, for a, a kitchen to, to have a really functional triangle, excuse me, I'm fumbling over my words. Let me take a sip from my adult sippy cup, as Jack calls it. <laughs> oh, 14 year olds, gotta love them. Um, the sink should be between the fridge and the range. So in, a, in, a, in the perfect world of the perfect kitchen triangle, the sink should be in between those things. This doesn't have that. Does it work? Yeah, it does. So it, are they breaking the rule? Yes. Should they be fined for that? Well, obviously. But th this works for, the, for this kitchen. That's the way it's got to go. So no big worries there. I want to show you these because it, it just shows you the variety of kitchens that not all of them adhere to the perfect kitchen triangle and how it, it really doesn't matter. I wonder if those pizzas are actually in there cooking. It looks like the oven's on, so it must be. So here's uh, another little kitchen. Now, we don't see the fridge unless that little, like it's a little tiny fridge there behind that table uh, by that green bag, um, like a, a, you know, a small apartment-sized fridge. Uh, but again, so the, if that is the fridge, that would be a little kitchen triangle. Here's just a little small kitchen. You got the elements that you need. You need prep space. You need to have some storage. You need to have some landing areas, um, lots of light. It's small. It's compact. It does the job. It functions as, as a kitchen, whether or not that triangle is there. So, Jackie, you're going to get banned, Jackie, from the channel if you keep up these comments. You don't love that OTR, Jackie. I know you don't. That's just a dig. Oh, there you go. You can, you can often set an oven to just uh, have the light on. Yeah, you can. But would you leave your pizzas in there? I don't know. I think that's, it looks like the the timer's on. Um, I think that's a setup. I don't think those pizzas are really cooking. But interesting. Uh, anyway, so yeah, all the different sizes, just to say that whether or not you have the perfect functioning shape, it really doesn't matter. You, you work in the kitchen in a particular way that's functional, and that's the main thing. And here you have this very eclectic kitchen, um, which is pretty cool, actually. This would make a great Airbnb space. Um, you know, not for everyone, but one wall, no triangle. It's very linear, and it just is what it is. So th that's, that is number one. And just, again, to say, you can break that rule, and... If you're talking with a designer, working with a designer, and it's, it is good practice to have, you know, a functional kitchen, obviously, you want the, the kitchen triangle was invented so that it is efficient, and that's fine. But in today's world, in the way that we work in our kitchens, the amount of people that are working in the kitchen, remember, the, the kitchen triangle was back in the day when there was just like a, a woman in the kitchen uh, making meal for the family. Basically, that, that, that's it. But that's not the way it looks like now. I mean, it, there could be three or four people in the kitchen. There, there, there's The way the kitchen functions now is just different. And so we need to update the fact that, okay, well, this, this triangle thing is a good concept, but let's just bring it into the 2020s so that we can make it so that people aren't saying, well, do I, you know, is that a perfect kitchen triangle or not? Like, like, who cares? It's the perfect kitchen oval. 
or it's the perfect linear kitchen or, you know, what have you. As long as your kitchen functions, that's the main thing. So break that rule all you want 100 times a day. I do not mind if the kitchen triangle rule is broken. Um, but it's, it is a good starting point to look to see if your kitchen is, you know, within reasonable uh, workability. It, it, it's a good, like, starting point. It's good. It's good reference to see. Um, so I'm, like, I'm not against it, but I'm not like 100% have to adhere to it. And my kitchen just by accident fits within, you know, reasonable standards of a, of a triangle. But I didn't do that on purpose. Okay, let's keep on going. The next one's this rule. I get this question a lot about dishwasher placement. And it's like an unspoken rule that, um, you know, I don't know where it came from. Anyway, you probably have heard this rule before you, or you've heard this before. And I get this question asked a lot. It comes up from clients. It comes up with designs that, that I, I work with with clients. Um, is, is that the, the if you're right-handed, the dishwasher has to be on the right of your sink. That That's not a rule. And and we've we've talked about this before, but that's that's not a rule. I I I don't see why it would have to be that way, and um, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's to me that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I've had them on both sides, so it's not like I'm talking like out, you know whatever. I I've had them on both sides. They're both functional. It's where they need to be to be in the best place for it. So this conversation came up with someone recently where they wanted the dishwasher on the right side because they, they thought that it had to be there. And I'm saying, no, it doesn't need to be there. In fact, if it's on the right side, it's it's in a more inconvenient place for everything else that's happening in the kitchen. So let's move it to the left side because it works better there and... They're like, well, isn't that like a rule of some sort? I'm like, no, it's, it's no rule. Kara said it's not a rule, it's just common sense. I, I'm not even sure. It's, I think the, the thing you have to consider is where does it fit? Maybe it's in an island behind you. It, it doesn't need to be on the right side if you're right-handed. That's what I'm trying to say. If it works there the best, fine. If it doesn't, it, it doesn't. That one gets me all the time. I don't get it. So here's just a right dishwasher on the right-hand side. Very cool. It works, but you know, here's another one. All good, no problems. That's too close to Peninsula, by the way. So this kitchen is breaking a guideline. Just like you to know that should be 21 inches from that Peninsula. So Kitchen Aid, you're breaking guidelines, and I'm and I'm. It's out there in the world now, so you can quit it. All right, fix this. Anyway, here's one here on the left hand side. Oh my goodness, Whirlpool, what are you doing? Putting it on the left hand side, Whirlpool. You people are just beyond me. I just can't believe this. All the rules being broken. Okay. It doesn't matter. All right. Just deal with it. Here's another one on the right-hand side. Okay. This one fits. I don't know what kind of, what company this is, but this works. It's on the right-hand side. It's fine. It has to go where it needs to go, but there's no written rule that it needs to be there. And so don't worry about that. Uh, that's, that's not a thing. Here's where it shouldn't be, on the back of your island. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there you go. Unless, I don't even I don't even know how or why this is like this. This is just the most interesting dishwasher placement I've ever seen. Um, you know, if you can't decide where to put it, put it on the back of your island. That's, uh, yeah. I'll just let that sink in for a minute because when I see this, I'm like, no, that... That can't be right. But there it is. I mean, it's a beautiful looking kitchen. It's not like it's some just random old thing. It's designed and new and they're, they're you know, uh, they're doing this. <clears throat> there you go. This I don't recommend, but hey, does it have to be on the right-hand side of your dish of your sink? It absolutely does not. Um. <sighs> Well, Jackie, I'm not going to argue with you. It's the best spot for you is the key. You just missed out that. It's the best spot for me. And uh, yes, we'll go there. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. All right, let's keep going. So that's that's the number two rule I think you can break. 
uh, is that one. Let's talk about wall cabinets. We talk about this all the time. I know um, many of you are, you know, have, well, not many of you, but some of you are, uh, who would say, hey, we don't need to have wall cabinets all the time. Um, and Helen, yeah, Helen has um, no wall cabinets. It's something that she uh, she went for. Now, here's the thing. Here's here's what I find. I'll just leave this picture here for a second. Normally, when um, you see a kitchen that, that normally people are saying they don't have wall cabinets, it's usually re replaced with hanging things like this or a whole bunch of open shelves. I'm not saying that. I think if you're going to break the rule of having no wall cabinets, one, make sure you have ample storage somewhere in your kitchen, somewhere else. Make sure it makes sense and don't take them out blindly. But also, and fine, if you want to take out your wall cabinets and fill the space with these rods and open shelves everywhere, by all means, go for it. Um, that's all fine. I think the main point of the wall cabinet rule is that they're absolutely necessary and you have to have them to have a completed kitchen. And I think that that can be challenged whether, you know, whether or not it works for your kitchen. Of course, that's a different story. Uh, this is a very beautiful range and again, inset doors. So it must be in the UK. All right. So here we have like just a lot of uh, open shelving and that's fine, but I'm not, a, I'm not a huge fan of, of this particularly. I don't, you know, I'm not against it. I'll tell you what I love about this kitchen. Absolutely love about this kitchen. And I'll give you a second to guess. And you you probably will guess it because it's not something that you see very often. But just give it a second and put it in the chat. What do I love about this kitchen? Oh, it's such a great little feature. Such a great little feature. Let me take a sip of my adult sippy cup. Link in the description where you can get this Water H Smart Water Bottle. I've been drinking this all week. I've only met my goal once, <laughs> so I don't drink enough water. But I'm trying. No clutter on the countertops, wrought iron, metal on the bar. Uh, da, 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 da. Footrest, yes. I'm going to tell you something. If you have an island like this with seating, and you have a footrest, it's a game changer. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it is an absolute game changer to put a footrest. Um, so I love that detail. Anyways, uh, what were we talking about? No wall cabinets. Let's keep going. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. They have ample storage somewhere else. Beautiful kitchen doors, really rich color, but just no shelving, no hanging things. Just beautiful. I really like this. There's obviously ample storage in this kitchen, but there's no need to have wall cabinets on that wall. You could put them there. You could have a bunch of wall cabinets there for the sake of having them. It would probably, and you could probably design it so it looks nice. I mean, whoever did this could probably do that. However, this is a very beautiful look. It doesn't need the wall cabinets. If there's ample storage somewhere else, why put them there? It's okay to break that rule. What are you saying, Phil? If I had Mark Tobin as my kitchen designer, I would have him make custom hood for the range that is painted to look like a microwave <laughs> just put, and just panel it uh, when I'm bored with it. It's a great idea. We could get um, my buddies at 60 Minute Science to do a wrap that looks like a microwave. We could just stick it on there. That, that works. All right. Here we go again. So this has a lot of windows, which is great. Not a lot of room for wall cabinets. So if this was designed this way, beautiful. Do you need to have the windows next to the range like that? Maybe not. Maybe they, they don't need them there. Maybe from the exterior, it makes the, the look of the house, you know, the way that the house is supposed to look. But again, there's probably ample storage. Um, dishwashers on the right on this one, <laughs> by the way. And they got those little hanging things, which are fine. You know, the, I guess that's cool. But, um, you know, no, no wall cabinets again. And so the idea of just having them for the sake of having them, that's a rule that you can, you can definitely um, not adhere to if you don't need to. Don't do it blindly. Make sure you have ample storage. Make sure it works for your kitchen. But uh, it's one you can get away with for sure. Um, where are these images from? These images are from the Google. I just Google images. 
and look for ones that I don't want to talk about. So no, no particular place in general. Just I just Google them. Yeah. I'll tell you what's not on my list tonight, but I'm wishing it was because I don't want to just, for Jackie's sake, I don't want to just keep harping on about the OTR, but now I'm wishing I put it on the list. Rules that you can break. I'll tell you a rule you can break is you can put an OTR in your kitchen if you want to. If, there's, if you absolutely have to have an OTR and you think it's functional and it works for you, you can break Mark Tobin Kitchen Design's rule of not having an OTR. All right, I'll give you that one. Let's keep going. Good thing this isn't recorded because I'll have to deny that I ever said that. Here we go again, another kitchen. Uh, you know, of course, the countertops look a little cluttered for some people. Maybe that's just the way it goes. They got the hanging rack thing, but you could easily put wall cabinets in this kitchen. There's room for them, but there's none there. How come? Well, because they didn't want any, and that's okay. And it's okay for you, too, if you don't need to, um, to have them. All right, let's go. More inset. Man, loving the inset. This is the probably European kitchen as well, UK, from the smaller appliance and the inset doors. Definitely a thing that we should have more of. Here you go. You have one little wall cabinet that comes down to the countertop with that drawer, um, and then the rest has none. Uh, you know, looks beautiful, looks great. A few open shelves, whatever. Fill your boots. I don't care. Um, I love the drain board in this kitchen. That's that's into that countertop. That's very cool. So um, someone says it's a Duval kitchen. Must be that one. Probably. They do beautiful work. So another rule that, that we don't need to to adhere to. Um, of course, all these things. There's other things to consider, which is. Is the kitchen functional? Do you have storage? Do you have prep space? Is there lots of light? Is it workable? You know, can you get around? Can you function in it? Those are the things to really keep um, something, uh, you know, in focus when you're designing a kitchen. Here's another one here. I really like this kitchen, actually. I love the high gloss uh, wood look. It looks pretty cool. I love those tiles. I don't know. Just something about this that draws me in. It's a beachy feel, I guess. Uh, and, you know, I got that beachy Mediterranean vibe going um this has a few wall cabinets on one wall which is great and then on the other wall there's room for them they're not there there's no reason to have them there if you don't need them so you know you can have some and not have others so this is just when you're planning out a kitchen uh, i have spoke with a client today and they designed a very very beautiful kitchen um and they had some wall cabinets, but it, they, they weren't just cramped in around the range. They, there was lots of space. And so you, you don't have to just get rid of all your wall cabinets, but you can cut back a little bit. And just open up the kitchen, make it a little more open, <laughs> the uh, airy. I don't know what the right word is. Everything doesn't have to be crammed in with wall cabinets. And uh, you can just give, give that feel, that openness to the kitchen. Make sure your kitchen just look more open. All right, let's keep going. And the dishwasher's on the right. Maybe it's a rule you should be following, but not according to me. Here's another one here. A few open shelves. Lots of wall space. Um, you know, great. No wall cabinets. Great. Uh, it's a beautiful kitchen. You know, beautifuler than mine. And it has no wall cabinets. I have wall cabinets. So, you know, there you go. So I just think that uh, when you're designing a kitchen, do what really works for you if you want if you'd like that look of having that open feel that's okay and if you have the ample storage perfect uh, in some other place you know think about cutting back a little bit on, on the wall cabinets it's definitely not a trend in north america by far um because you know we just we just want to cram kitchens with cabinets because we don't use every inch of space that's absolutely possible to use we don't want to waste any space and we, we really get on that that bandwagon of just making sure we have every every square inch spoken for and these kitchens don't and um i'm saying that they can be functional without that so that's the crux i did put corner cabinets on this list because uh this is you know what you don't want to end up with this was the worst case scenario in my opinion and uh, i think that um if you can avoid this avoid it at all costs this is a nightmare, um, hands and knees scenario. It's just things are going to get buried, and this is what we don't want to have in a kitchen. If you have this in your kitchen, 
drop everything you're doing right now and go and see if you can address this situation because this is serious. Okay, people, I'm not joking right now. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> anyway, so go and get this fixed. Go and get this fixed. Why are you doing, what are you doing here? Stop this. This is horrible. The doors hinge the wrong way, first of all. It should be hinged the other way. Oh my goodness, this is killing me. It looks like Corian though, is it? Yeah, it looks like it. Beautiful. Um, not, uh, whatever. This is an old kitchen. You want to avoid this as well. This type of Lazy Susan is not for this type of cabinet. Um, get one that at least works for the cabinet that you're putting it in and not this foolishness. So this is a mess. Anyways, so we want to avoid this. Avoid this. Okay. Because I'm telling you for a long time, this is the rule. You got to put a corner cabinet in. This becomes the rule. You got to put a Lazy Susan in. This is the new rule, of course, is just having a nicer Lazy Susan. And I'm all for this. You got your pots and pans in there. There's lots of room for them. They're not going to fall off anywhere. You got this interesting door uh, that's not piano hinge, but both of them open. Uh, so that's that's cool. Um, this isn't giving you any more access. It's just a different way to open the door. So don't get tricked by thinking, oh, I got more access now. It's the same access that you would with a regular piano hinge door. But uh, this is a little better. Um so, you know, th that's good. Not my favorite, of course. We all know that. Um, here I am talking about wasting space by blocking a corner. But there's wasted space in there. A ton of it. So, anyway. Uh, here's another option for your kitchen. You know, putting in... So, instead of just having a corner cabinet, put in put in drawers if you want to. Uh, there's wasted space there, too, by the way. If you do this. There's always going to be a waste of space, okay? It's just managing your expectations of what that is. And and for some of us, it's saying, that's okay. We're allowed to have space that's not accounted for in a kitchen. We really are. We have space in every other part of our home that's not accounted for. It's okay to have it in our kitchen as well. Um, I'm not a huge fan of corner drawers in general. Um, you know, whatever. I don't know why. No, no real... <clears throat> real reason i guess just i just don't like them so anyway but you can do it uh here is something that doesn't get spoken of a lot and that's having the three bin recycle center in your cabinet so listen here let me just cycle back a couple pictures if you have this get rid of that shelf and at the very least put this in takes care of all that it's a great space for it those are huge 42 quart probably i think they are quart yeah or liter Court, I think, um, bins, and there's three of them. And when they're rotated the right way, the door just closes like a regular Lazy Susan door. They pop out of there super easy. I think that's a great way to go. You're saying that looks ridiculous. Well, you know, this looks ridiculous. This at least is, has function. So go that way. Break Break the rule of having a Lazy Susan. At least do something like that. <laughs> don't knock it till you try it i just wanted to say <laughs> it does look a little bit much okay of course you you know you get these uh these pull outs that, that are something that you can do um you know there's there's lots of ways to deal with a corner cabinet um this is a very interesting one here the corner pantry unit but this one is corner pantry on steroids because i'm not a fan of a corner pantry generally i just think they look bulky and ugly um but this is a different way to do it very functional lots of storage and i really like this you need a lot of room for something like this it's got to work for your particular kitchen but something like this i think is really cool uh with with a ton of storage so you know to each his own whatever works i think those doors are pretty cool um Lots of different ways to do a kitchen. So what, what the rule I'm saying is don't get stuck with thinking you need to have some kind of traditional corner base cabinet. You know, there's lots of different ways. I have tons of content on base corners. There's lots of ways to do it. I do videos about it. I do little tutorials with using Ikea to kind of show you. Uh, one recently did really, really well uh, just on showing you different ways to do a corner cabinet. And so uh, break the rule of just having a traditional corner with a Lazy Susan. And, uh, and and stretch the envelope a little bit in your own kitchen. If it's the best thing for the kitchen, then it's the best thing. You know, I, I mean having a corner with a Lazy Susan. If that works, if that's the only thing that works, then by all means, go for it. But there are other options for you. Um, and, 
you're not going to believe this, but in the Airbnb that we're, we're renovating, I'm probably going to have a corner base with a lazy Susan. So, and I'm probably going to have an OTR. I'm just kidding. I'm not ever going to have an OTR. I don't care what I have to do. There's never going to be an OTR on the cameras. Cut out of me. Never going to be an OTR in my kitchen. Forget about it. I don't care. Um, but it will have a corner base with Lazy Susan, I'm thinking. Uh, anyway, I'm breaking my own rules. I hate those things, but it's, it seems to be the only thing that's going to work for that space. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe not. Maybe I'll put in one of these, Natasha. Where'd it go? Right there. Maybe I'll put one of those in. Hmm? What do you think of that? It's actually a great idea, Mark. Hmm. I might do that. Okay. Here's the rule you can break. Following the rules. I don't have any slides for this one, so let's just go back here. Break the rules. It's fine. Following all the rules to a T maybe won't make sense for your kitchen, and so it's not necessary that you do it um, if it's going to mean your kitchen is going to not function the way that you want it to. So that's the really the main rules having a kitchen that works for you. And so don't worry about following all the rules. Now, again, I'm saying this on the back of a video that I just did telling you all the guidelines and all the rules per se. But even on those, I said, you know, some of these might not work for you because your kitchen might be too small or too big or whatever the case may be. And so make sure that it's, it's designed to be functional and uh, don't worry about that. There's lots of other rules we can talk about. If you go through the kitchen guidelines, you know, talks about the amount of storage space you need for a particular size kitchen. Well, you know, that just might not be possible in for your scenario. There might be other things you want. You may you may want to have, you know, two dishwashers instead of one and that takes up storage space. You may want to have you know, you might have a wall oven and or a double wall oven or you might have a whole bunch of appliances, small appliances or other specialty appliances that you need to fit into your kitchen that will take away from storage. So there's there's no there's no right or wrong. I would say that you know needs to be functional for you. Now, there are some things I would consider maybe non-negotiables. Even these I break from time to time. Uh, some of those would be like clearances. So <laughs> funny story, Jackie. Um, <clears throat> I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, but yeah, clearances. Clearances should be really looked at to make sure that they're they're workable for you. Um, and if they're not, then that definitely needs to be considered. And of course, this usually comes in, comes into play if you have an island. Um, generally speaking, if you just have an open L shape or introduce an island or a pen, not even really a peninsula, but every time you, you do put in an island, uh, you have to start thinking about uh, clearances. And so that is definitely really important. Can you break those rules? You can, but very, very gently uh, should you be doing that and with very careful consideration and with extra set of eyes on that to really make sure that you can um, you can make that work. Um, now, let me go back as Phil. Did I answer Phil's question from earlier, Phil? I seen you had a question and I just want to find it. Just give me a second as I scroll down. Love that you guys are so active in the in the chat. Um, yeah, here it is. Here. Oh, Edward had a question. Sorry, Edward, not Phil. Um, is a linear kitchen with an island a galley kitchen? Hmm. Is it? No, I think a galley has to have two walls. I, th I think. Am I right? I don't know. Maybe not. I. I don't think so. I think a galley is two walls, right? Like on a boat. Anyway, I think so. Okay, let's go back. Um, what are you saying about OTRs now? Let me go back down here a little bit. If I missed you when I was saying hello, hi to everyone who did join. If you're watching on whatever device you're watching on, make sure you can hit the thumbs up. I think you can do that on any dev any device. So I would, I super do love uh, and appreciate when you uh, hit the thumbs up. I don't know if it makes any difference with this video or not, but I appreciate it. Uh, aren't clearances wasted space? Um, 
sort of, they're not wasted because you're walking, walking there maybe, but um, <sighs> yeah, double OTR. That's what we want to get back to. Recently I had a client reach out to me about designing their kitchen and they, they said that they wanted a, a double OTR and they were joking because at the end they, they had a little laughy thing, but I thought they were serious because I, I was just reading it as I was reading it. And they were asking for a double OTR. <laughs> I thought, what in the world? What did I get myself into here? How do I break it to these people that you can't do this? <laughs> you can't you can't put an OTR over an OTR. I mean, I guess you could, but oh my goodness. I was like, oh, I didn't I didn't sign up for this. I am not doing that. I don't even want to design a kitchen with an OTR. <laughs> we'll send one. Yeah. Hey, listen, if you send me one, I will do a video on me smashing it to pieces <laughs> with that. <laughs> uh, that would be the that'll be the video. I'll just smash it to smithereens. So make sure it's not an expensive one because that baby's gonna be destroyed. Oh my goodness. I yeah, I probably would do that. I think that would be funny. So no offense. Oh, you're being facetious. Well, I'm normally facetious as well. So there you go. No island in a galley, uh, Sanjiv, for the win. Yes, thank you, Sanjiv. Um, I didn't think so. So, yeah, those those are all the rules. Do I have another one? No. Did I put in OTRs? No. Just for you guys, I didn't put the OTR in there. Um, but microwaves are, are another thing that, you know, we we sometimes think about in, in terms of where the microwave should be placed and the best places for a microwave. And, of course, some people do think that over your range is a great place um or in a base cabinet is a great place on the countertop in a cabinet now the guidelines suggest that it would be 45 54 inches rather from the finished floor to the bottom of that microwave um and that would be lower than what an otr would be and what they say about the otr is that it just should be um whatever the manufacturer says it should be but according to the guidelines an otr is higher than what a standard wall mounted microwave should be um, just because you, you do have the stove surface there and, you know, you do, you need to have clearance for that and it can't be down that low. So that's just something to, to consider. And that, that's probably one of the reasons why, um, you know, it's probably not the, the best idea overall, again, not beating a dead horse and not, not just jumping on the OTR just because it's a fun bandwagon to get on, which it is. Um, that is one of the considerations. If you're tall, who cares? doesn't matter. If you're shorter, that might be a big issue. But then having it in a wall cabinet, there there are other considerations as well. It needs to be deeper. Uh, normally, it should even be lower. Um, and so there's different design scenarios where that just won't work. In a base cabinet, it takes up a lot of space in a base cabinet. Mine does. My microwave's really big. It takes up a ton of space. It's a 30-inch base cabinet, and it just fits that space with the trim kit. Well, that's a lot of space to dedicate to an appliance that... I barely ever use. Anyway, my bad. In in future kitchens, if I ever have one, I'll probably go with the countertop microwave. I don't know. Um, or put it above a wall oven or something like that. So there's lots of places, and uh, it's okay to just think about the rules around that. I would say the rule to adhere to and not break is put it in a location that's you know maybe close to your fridge uh, so that you have access. To, that's where you use the microwave a lot of. Um, or put it close to where you want to heat up your tea and your coffee. Um, you know, there's lots of different things you can think about. So there you go. Tobinites, are we? <laughs> Tobinites. I didn't, I didn't see us in the book of numbers, but we got to be in there somewhere. In the UK, we don't have OTRs above our cookers, right? And maybe... Because I'm Canadian, maybe that's why I have an aversion to it. Um, because for some reason, us Commonwealthers really, you know, follow the European trends more closely than our other North American counterpart in the United States. Um, so there you go. I don't know. I think a pantry cabinet is a great idea. Yes. Or put your microwave thing in the pantry cabinet um you know go go that way there you go david in scotland i'm putting right away my flat gonna have a pantry in the hall gonna put the microwave in there lots of places for it 
my microwave is my assigned fridge spot. My microwave is in my assigned fridge spot. Where's your fridge? Is it in your assigned microwave spot? If so, that would probably work. <laughs> okay. Hey, there you go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Send, please send me an OTR for my Airbnb. I promise. I'll put it on the wall. I'd love to have room for a butler's pantry to put appliances in. Yeah. That's a great spot. Um, you know, having those uh, butler's pantries is a great idea. All right. The OTR comments are getting out of hand, so we'll uh, we'll, we'll keep going from there. Uh, let's, let's, I want to, here's what's coming up. Coming up, I'm doing my own quiz on kitchen countertops. Are you a noob or a pro? I have my own questions with 15 of my own questions. It's coming out on Saturday. It's going to test your knowledge of countertops and uh, whether you've been paying attention, uh, to my content or not, or maybe just general knowledge. So in honor of that, or in light of that, or with that in mind, uh, I found this BuzzFeed countertop questionnaire thing that we will uh, have a look at now. Natasha, OTR, stands for Over the Range. And um, it's just the acronym that has to do with the microwave that's placed over the range cooker. And um, it has been affectionately known as Over the Range, OTR because that's where it goes. <laughs> All right, let's go to, I'll share my screen. We'll go, what kind of countertops? Here we go. So this is what kind of countertops should your dream home have? And um, this is from 2017. Remember those days? Wow, back when, you know? Back when we used to walk to school uphill in a snowstorm. Both ways. All right, let's go. Uh, what kind of countertops should your dream home have? Well, let's find out. Let's do this quiz. And we'll see. So you're building your dream house, huh? Shouldn't that have a question mark? It has everything you want. Plenty of space for entertaining that kitchen island you've always dreamed of. Even a backyard your dog will love. But now it's time to pick the final piece, the countertops. What kind will you install in your kitchen? It's time to find out. Well, let's do that. Let's find out, people. Oh, there we go. That's a little better. I don't know why I need to be bigger, but anyway, it's my ego. Okay, let's go. Pick a cuisine. All right, here we go. Chinese, French. Greek, Italian, Japanese, or Mexican. I love these because they have nothing to do with countertop. Well, maybe they do. Let's go Italian. I'd love me some meatballs. Uh, okay. Sorry, should I be doing accents like that? Is that... I don't know. Is that wrong? Pick a destination. London, Los Angeles, Mexico City. Sao Paulo, Sydney, Tokyo. Um, man, I think LA would be fun to visit. Mexico City, I think, is a little too dangerous. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they're all dangerous. Tokyo? Sydney. I live in Sydney, so I don't want to visit this place. Let's go LA. Pick an HGTV host. Easy. Chip and Joanna all the way 100% of the time. It's not trendy. It's just I, I think those, I read his book. I love those guys. Not Tarek. I don't, I don't like that Tarek guy. Sorry, Tarek. Not like you're watching this. Hillary and David. Oh, I do love the banter. I don't know her. Drew and Jonathan. They're Canadians. Ooh, I should probably pick those guys. David Bromstad? Nah, go with Chip and Joanna. All right, let's keep going. Pick a month. <laughs> what? What's that have to do with your countertop? You want to know what kind of countertop you should have? All right, pick a month. 
Let's go September. It's my birth month. Jackie's too, right? Jackie's in September. Pick a cookbook. Seriously, people? Brunch at Bobby's. <laughs> the Pioneer Woman's Cookbook. Oh, my word. Cooking with Jeffrey. That sounds fun. Julia Child, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. Well, if I picked Italian as my cuisine, I'm probably not going to master the art of French cooking. Molo, Malto Gusto. What? That sounds Italian to me. I might have to go that way. And what's this one? Oh, Guy Guy? Guy Ferry or Guy Ferry? I guess it depends on where you live. Um, I have a friend named, well, I had a friend named Guy, but maybe his name's Guy. Family food. No, I'm going with Malto Gusto for sure. But just a quick, a second would have been cooking for Jeffrey. <laughs> that just sounds amazing. Anyway, all right, Malto Gusto. Pick a shade of white. <laughs> what? Are you even serious? Uh, let's go with white mist. Looks rather beautiful. Here we go. Marble. While everyone else is going crazy for granite. I don't know about that. You bought yourself a countertop that's timeless. And I'm probably going to stain. Did you have to splurge on marble from the same quarry that Michelangelo used to carve David? No. But that's just the kind of visionary you are. What? You're not buying a countertop. You're buying a lifestyle. Yeah, baby. And yours is pure luxury. Bam! Right there. Come on. Oh my gosh, wow. That is beautiful. Oh, marble. I don't even think that's marble in that picture. <laughs> maybe that's marble back there. That just looks like quartz to me. Oh, maybe it is. I don't know. Guys, that was fun. Let's do it again. <laughs> Why not? We got a few minutes. Let's do it again. If you're if you're here with me, stick around. We'll do this one again. It looks fun let's just refresh that one all right let's go back up we'll pick some different ones this time what kind of counter up are your dream kitchen gonna have all right okay let's do it again so let's pick a cuisine let's see what a chinese cuisine is going to give us for countertop let's pick a destination okay well let's stay well let's go to tokyo but anyway did they have japanese they did oh let's go japanese that make more sense. Japanese, we'll do Tokyo for a destination. Um, I seen someone said uh, Drew and Jonathan are knuckleheads. <laughs> Is that true? I never met them. Um, I mean, it seems a little bit whatever. Let's go with Hillary and David this time. Those guys are cool. All right, pick a month. Um, November. Reminds me of Guns N' Roses. Let's see, May. Uh, reminds me of... That reminds me of the Fortune Bay Suns. Uh, let's go January in Tokyo. Let's pick a cookbook. Oh, we're cooking for Jeffrey, baby. Yes, we are in Tokyo. Let's pick a shade of white. Let's go eggshell. Oh, there you go. Granite. You know exactly what, what you want. The best or nothing else. <laughs> That's not how you say that. The best or nothing else? The best. I guess that's, I don't know. That doesn't sound English to me. Anyway, maybe it's me that it should be, you should be laughing at. And you're not afraid to spend a little extra to go get it. You want the best and nothing else, right? Isn't it and nothing else? When you're entertaining in that open kitchen of yours, oh, in Tokyo, because you also got that open kitchen, obviously, everyone's going to be wowed by your impeccable design taste. Well, there you go. Looks like uh, I'm going to go with some granite. Guys, that's amazing. Um, okay, all right, let's go back. I'm getting a request to do the knuckleheads and let's pick July because it is July. Hope you don't mind. Hey, let's just hang out and do this for a few minutes. Let's just see what, another one we can get. So we got marble, we got granite. Let's see if we get a repeat. Uh, if we pick a different cuisine, let's go en français. 
Um, did I pick? No, I already picked French, didn't I? No, I didn't. Uh, let's go with. Do, 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 do. Let's go with London. <laughs> let's go with the knuckleheads, Drew and Jonathan Scott. Hello. Let's go with pick a month. Let's go July because it's July. And let's pick a cookbook. All right, this is where I'm lost. Um, I seen somebody saying Julia Child. Oh yeah, because we're doing the French cooking. Perfect. And let's pick a shade of white. Well, let's go with uh, uh, blanc, blanc en blanc. Oh, we got marble. I wonder how many there are. There are probably only two options. Uh, okay, so there you go. While everyone's going crazy, like the people in Tokyo for Granis, we're going crazy for marble here in London with our French cooking in July. Okay, we got to do another one. We got to do another one. This is the part of the uh, live stream I'll just cut off later on, but I'm having fun. If you uh, if you have to go, thank you for being here so much. I do appreciate it. We're just going to do a few more of these because uh, I think it's a little fun. Pick a cuisine. Okay, let's go with Greek. Just going to love that feta. Pick a destination. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're going Mexican, Jackie, right? Mexican. And we're going to Mexico City. La la, here we go. And we're going to go with, uh, oh, I don't know. Tarek, I don't know, Tarek. I'm going to go with you. Pick a month. Well, let's go March break in Mexico City. Let's pick a cookbook. Well, brunch at Bobby's sounds brilliant so we're gonna go with that one and we'll pick a shade of white well in mexico i guess we'd have to go with eggshell no let's go with pure white i don't know i forget which ones we're picking in the white department and we got granite again hmm okay i'm thinking there's only two options so we gotta do it one more time to see if we can pick we gotta mix things up so i'm gonna go totally crazy here and uh let's go with Okay, we're going to go. We did Italian, we did we do we did Japanese, we do French, we did Chinese. I don't think we did Chinese, we did Japanese, right? Because we did Japanese in Tokyo. Okay, let's go Chinese and we'll go Sao Paulo and we'll go with David Bromstead. I don't know him. And we're going to do this in uh, November. And we're going to cook we want that Pioneer Woman's Cookbook on the go, and we're going to pick a shade of white called Mirage White. And we got one awesome tile. You bought yourself a house near the beach. You got your Pioneer Woman's Cookbook out, and you're going to cook some food. Obviously, and you're sticking with the beachy theme. Your kitchen, uh, your kitchen's clean and functional with simple lines and elegant touches. Touches that are all you. You've added uh, a few pops of color, those succulents by the window, those bright pot holders hanging above the stove. Oh yeah, you've got you've got class, and you're also watching your budget. Nicely done with your tile. All right, cool. Um, first of all. Don't put tile as your countertop. That's just not something you should ever do. If you do have that, get it changed. It's not recommended for me. <laughs> In uh, the video coming up on Saturday, which is a quiz on countertops, I do mention that you shouldn't have tile um, backsplash. Or not backsplash, countertop. You go ahead with the tile backsplash, but not the countertop. I think it's a horrible idea. Okay, yeah, too much grout. Paul, question. Oh, Mark. Okay, Mark. Question of for the week. Barbie or Oppenheimer? Pink plastic or nuke blast? Um, are you talking about the movies? I'm only saying that because I think there's a Barbie movie coming out. Uh, 
And I'm a Barbie girl, so I would definitely probably do the Barbie movie. Barbie Christmas was a great, a great show. We actually watched that recently, um, like only like this past Christmas season with the with the kids before we went away for Christmas. <laughs> Because that was one of our favorites, the Barbie Christmas special. Really good. Let's go, Barbie. All right. <laughs> Jonathan and Drew love tile. They love tile, like, countertops? No way, really? Those knuckleheads. <sighs> oh, yeah. No, you got to get that fixed. Everyone's talking about those two movies. I don't know. Um, I really don't know anything about the movies. Uh, listen, break the rules when you're dealing with your kitchen. Don't worry about it. Follow the rules as well. Uh, that's really important. Break them and follow them. Make up your own rules. Make sure you just have a functional kitchen that works for you. And that uh, when someone comes in, they say, wow, you really put some thought into this. That's really the main thing. When I go with, um, you know, people doing clientele work, when I go online with people and we do one-on-ones and they show me their kitchens, uh, a lot of people, you can see they've put thought into it. They've designed the kitchen because they really, you know, one client said, I've been living in this kitchen for months now. There's no kitchen there. It's all in their head. It's all on paper. It's all in the IKEA planner. But they've been living in it. They've been they've been thinking about it. They've been planning it out, and that's really important. So, make sure that you you do that. Follow that rule for sure. Get the kitchen that you really love and deserve. The other rule that you need to be following is to like and subscribe to this channel. That's a good one, and uh, give a thumbs up and a comment and all those other fun YouTuber things. And if you really want a really beautiful water bottle, check the link in the description below for ten percent discount on this hundred dollar water bottle that my kid calls an adult sippy cup. But I've been lo really loving lately, and they did send me that for free, and they did ask me to talk about it. But I do like it, so you know they didn't pay me. Uh, so there you go. Smash that bell, hit the like button. Do all the things that, that the YouTubers uh, ask you to do. And, um, you know, have a super awesome week. Uh, I do want to say, channel's been growing recently. That's really awesome. I appreciate everyone who interacts with my with my content. Um, so that's really cool. Um, coming up in August, heading away to Costa Rica for a few weeks, for a month almost. And so um, I'm going to have videos that are uploaded uh, that um, I did a while ago, and uh, they were going to be part of a course that I was putting together, but I kind of scrapped it because it just was, it's just not what I wanted. So there won't be, it won't be like my regular content. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be a little more educational, um, less less goofiness on my end. Uh, but I, I got to get, I want to put something up uh, for people um, in August. But in saying that, a lot of great things are happening. Like uh, we mentioned before, Amy and I are, are you know, purchasing this home that we're converting into a rental property, short-term rental property. And we have a lot of great content coming up on the renovation process of that. It'll be definitely a little bit different for my channel because I don't do a lot of that kind of content because um, I have nothing to renovate. And, you know, that that's a different type of thing. So I'm going to be uh, filming as much as that of that process as possible. Um, I'm partnering up with a really great uh, cabinet door company for that project as well, which is going to be exciting. And I'm excited about um, we'll, we'll, more on that later as it, as it all unfolds. But it's going to be really fun to uh, to film this. And it'll be really in different content than what I'm used to making. And uh, so I hope we do a really good job on it. But that being said, I, I really hope that you enjoy it. And just to see that process, see my my thoughts about the kitchen. I know we did a live stream with with a little bit of this earlier, but just see what goes behind what I think about when I'm designing this kitchen. It's a small kitchen, so what does that look like? How do you design a small kitchen? Um, you know, how to get the most out of that space? What am I going to change? What am I going to keep the same? And uh, I'll probably do other parts of that space as well. Um, maybe just make a series about it. I, I don't want to go too far off my niche of kitchen design, but I think it will be interesting content, and I'm. I'm really excited to, to do that and make that. So that being said, that's coming up uh, in the next little while once we get back from our uh, family time away. So 
and uh, <laughs> there will be, uh, it's going to be Ikea boxes um, in, in this kitchen. Um, I think, I think, I think, I think. Is that Home Depot today looking at their Euro style? Might go that way. I don't know. We'll see. You will find out. I will find out. We'll all find out together because I'm going to create, I'm going to record all of it, try to just capture as much of it as I can. The other thing I'm, I'm thinking about doing, and this has nothing to do with my kitchen design niche, but it's just to film a little bit of my, my experience with the family in Costa Rica. And um, I'm just thinking of, of a good way to share that. Maybe I'll tag it on the end of a live stream somewhere. So it's kind of buried in, in my content, but not something that is uh, up close uh, so that everyone can find and see because it has nothing to do with kitchens. Unless I can find something down there that I can record uh, to do with kitchens. But um, anyway, that's just something I'm thinking about. Canadian Tire does not have kitchens. They have vanities, I believe, and faucets and stuff like that. But no, Canadian Tire does not have kitchens. They do have tires. Um, and they have just about everything else you can imagine for your home at unbelievable prices sometimes. They have the most amazing deals at Canadian Tire. And it's a great place to buy tools and all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. All right, everyone. Listen, I'm going to run. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Um, always one of my most enjoyable hours on the internet is hanging out with you guys and just seeing all the comments and all the interactions. I really do appreciate it. Um, one of these nights I'm going to just uh, dive into the comment section more than I have been recently because I do appreciate you guys. And uh, we'll probably do a question an answer type of, of live stream coming up. So one more con one more live stream, I think before I go, or maybe two for the month of August, there won't be any live streams. Um, so just because I won't be able to do them. So anyway, that'll be, that'll be as what it is. We'll reconvene once I get back. I think we have one next week and maybe the week after. I'm not sure. Anyway, guys, love you all. God bless you. Have a great week. And um, whatever movie you go see, buy the popcorn. Just do it. I know it's super pricey. But just 